Good morning. Oh, what a blessing. Thanks, Katrina, for playing. Welcome. This is Trinity United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Gina, and it is so, so good to see you guys. It's also good to see the folks online, too. I, I can't see you. We don't have the intera that interaction, but I do here. So um, I, and please keep your masks up. Know some of those rules, social distancing, hand washing um, in, on your way in, on your way out. Um, and no singing. I'm sorry about that part. Still have some rules, but it won't. I'm sure they won't last long. I'm sure they won't. Not because you're breaking them, but because things are getting better. Do you feel like things are getting better? Okay, good, good. I can't see any answers right now, <laughs> but I'm so glad you're here. What a blessing. Um, while you were gone, I may have put penguins or lions or other animals in your place just so I could remember you. And and pray for you. Not that you're a lion or a <laughs> I just wanted a place to, to focus and um, to remember folks. So whatever it was that might have been in your pew, and just know that it was out of love, okay? And I'm glad you're here today. What a blessing. Um, do we have anything we need to share? Any um, items, any agenda, things going on, anything coming up? I know we have a finance meeting this week, and we have a confirmation in youth group via Zoom. Um, Anything else going on this week we need to know about? Well, the Man of Meal is uh, Saturday night, absolutely. The Man of Meal is Saturday night. Um, if you, I want to say thank you if you've already signed up and participating in that. And if there is, are we all full on the Man of Meal? Do you have everything you need? We'll know on Monday. So if you get a phone call on Monday, the right answer is yes, I would love to. Okay. And if uh, you're not able to, please be in prayer for those who are cooking and serving. And most of all, be in prayer for those who are receiving those foods, those meals. Um, if they're coming to get a meal, there's a need. And we want to be praying for them. Um, anything else going on? Okay, then um, uh, the next slide, as it shows, it is Human Relations Sunday. Uh, our United Methodist denomination celebrates about six uh, special offerings a year. Um, Human Relations Sunday is one of them. Um, as the slide says, God calls us to do justice wherever we are. Sometimes justice comes in the form of mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual healing through outreach programs, especially for individuals grappling with addiction. Your gift makes change possible. So um, we're trying to give voices to those who are voiceless. So that's what that offering goes to. If you have any other questions, feel free to catch me. Um, I'd be happy to share more information. But um, if you weren't prepared for that offering, we can accept it at any time. It's one of those that just, as soon as it comes in, it goes right back out. Um, so thank you for that. Anything else going on? Well, then let's pray, shall we? Oh, wait a minute. We got... Okay, once again, Super Bowl Sunday, you can have soup. Um, the outreach committee is uh, picking that up this year. Um, so call the church office if you would like soup. Uh, call the church office and tell Kathy what kind of soup you would like, and she'll take, keep track of all the orders. Um, so we have more than enough soup. Um, you will be able to drive through the north entrance and pick those up on Saturday, February 6th. Um, it'll be a great time. I'm looking forward to that soup. Anything else going on? Okay. Yes. I think all of us want to wish you a happy vacation. <laughs> Thank you. A happy vacation. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank you. Well, let's pray, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day and for all the blessings that it holds. Lord, we are so grateful that we can be in person again, exchanging smiles behind the masks and, and waving to our friends. Lord, more importantly, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to be in our church, in, in, the, in the house of the Lord. 
Lord, what a blessing it is that we can gather. I think we're meant for community. And when we gather, it just reaffirms that feeling. So, Lord, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead us, to guide us, to journey with us. Lord, may all that we do and say, sing and pray, bring honor and glory to you. It is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in the responsive reading? Uh, come joyfully before the Lord. Come prayerfully before the Lord. Come hopefully before the Lord. Know throughout all your being that God absolutely loves you. Would you join, I say that, would you, our opening song is hymn number 2130, The Summons. Um, I, again, because of COVID, we can't sing, but you can hum, and we're only going to have one verse, so um, hum loud. 2130. You know that last word popped in last night and I didn't get it out of there, my fault. <laughs> Repentance. Our first scripture today is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord, assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel! Yes? Samuel replied, What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. And so he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time and once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized that it was the, the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls you again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel. Samuel, and Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Samuel stayed in bed until morning, 
then got up and opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. But Eli called out to him, Samuel, my son, here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything, and may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold back anything. It is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. All that Samuel all, and all Israel from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. Our second scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. All things are lawful for me, but not everything is beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be controlled by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both. The body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Now God indeed raised the, the Lord, and he will raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I make them members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that anyone who is united with a prostitute is one body with her? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But the one united with the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin a person commits is outside of the body. But the immoral person signs, uh, sins against his own body. Oh, there we go. I was just going to go read the Bible. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. The word of God for the people of God. Would you give a listen to a very special song? Um, Here I am, Lord. It's by Katrina O'Brien and Jared Federson.
Wow. Was that not great? We have so much talent in this, in this place. Thank you very much for that. Um, glory sightings. That was truly a glory sighting. Yeah. So Marianne ba Bosfield said it's so nice to see friends in the pews. What a blessing it is indeed. Um, thank you very much for that music as well. Um, are there any other glimpses of, of God in your life? I know it's been a while since I've seen many of you, so um, Belle. That first reading from Sam gave me goosebumps. Um, my mom's best friend of probably 50, 60 years, the first part of December, maybe end of November, had been told to stop her dialysis. She's 90. I think she turned 90 this week. So she went to the local care center, of course, in isolation. And we, she was flooded with calls and cards and whatever. But evidently, she said that the Lord spoke to her one night and told her she needed to resume them because by quitting, she was committing suicide. And that's her story. She's home. In her own hometown. Wow. So Val shared a story about her mom's friend who, um, the scriptures, the first scriptures about Eli really touched her. Um, Val's mom's friend um, was doing dialysis and, and quit. And the Lord came to her and said, you need to keep going. You need to keep doing that. And now she's home. What a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you for that witness. Any other glimpses of God's goodness or God's glory? I have to say, it's so good to see some, some friends um, from a previous church and some new people here as well. What a blessing. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. Any other glimpses of God? Right. Gail just shared that um, neighbors both had COVID and mild cases and they pulled through and, and all as well. It's pretty cool how God's working in and through people. Yes, Roger. Uh, Leanne Hartley's Wi-Fi was off and right at 9.30, LJ was able to reconnect. <laughs> <laughs> all in God's timing, all in God's timing. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad the Hartleys are with us this morning. Someone came in and they said, do we get extra Jesus points for being here? <laughs> sure, why not? Would you like some more? I got more work to do. Um, how many of you have actually had somebody help you with your snow last night or the last storm? Yeah. See, that's a glimpse of God's goodness and God's glory. Um, last night, the people were just popping. Yeah, that is. And it's so cool. To see um, neighbors helping neighbors and friends helping friends. I do want to say thank you to Scott for um, his work with the boiler system. Everybody comfortable this morning? Yes. Thank you, Scott. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so the sidewalks are all safe. And I hope everybody stays vertical on your way out as well. Um, anything else? Any other glimpses of God's goodness, God's glory? How about prayers? Is there someone we need to be lifting up in prayer or something you would like prayers for? Adela Griffo uh, just went to hospice this week. Um, so prayers for her, if you would. Gracious Lord. Yes. Absolutely. Camille Rogers in the loss of her husband, Dan. Dan served this church faithfully, and I know many people were blessed by that. So, gracious Lord. Gail would like prayers for her neighbor's son who is uh, struggling with COVID, not doing as well. 
Um, so definitely prayers. Gracious Lord. Let's go to our Lord in prayer, shall we? Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for the beauty of this day, for the blessings of white snow, fluffy white snow, great for skiing, great for snow angels, great for those snow, snow toys. Lord, we know that the snow can also make things a little icy and a little dangerous. So Lord, we ask you to Watch over the people, that are, help them to have fun if they're having fun, and help them to stay vertical if they need to stay vertical. Lord, it's all about you. It, it's another day to wake up and to journey with you. And what a blessing that is. Lord, we are so grateful. We are so humble that you call us, that you want us to be in relationship with us. That's pretty awesome. Lord, you have... Um, we, we have shared uh, many glimpses of your work. Lord, continue to reveal the work that you're doing and how we can be a part of that. Lord, you've, you've shared with us opportunities to be um, connecting with others, whether it's through um, some awesome things that are happening or some challenging things. But Lord, you know what's going on, and you know how to move us so that we can be a part of it. Lord, I know that there's folks who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Lord, I ask you to comfort them. Just meet them in their grief and, and journey with them through that. If you need our help or need us to do that too, move us. Move us to, to journey with someone. Lord, we know that there's many people who are not 100%. They're just not feeling 100%. So Lord, I ask you to place your healing hand on them. You are the great physician. And we know that you can do that. So, Lord, if it's your will, we just ask you to renew and restore and rebuild right where you're at. Lord, whether we get to be 85% or 95% or 110%, it's all because of you. And we give you thanks for helping us to serve you and to give back to others. Lord, I know that um, we come this morning. We come to hear your word proclaimed. We come to, to hear the songs. We come to see the, the faces of others. Lord, whether we're at home or here, we come because you have called us. Lord, we come from different weeks. Some are, some are great weeks and some are even better. And we come to share that with you. As we shared it with others, we come to share our week with you. So Lord, we ask you to incline your ear to us and hear our prayer. Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for knowing our needs, for hearing our prayers. We know that you love to hear from us. Lord, we ask you to shower Sharon Perkins' brother with, with love. We know that he's not progressing as well as we would like, so we're asking you to intervene and to, to turn things around. Lord, strengthen that family. Comfort them. Just comfort them. Lord, we feel so helpless at times. But when we, we connect with you in prayer, we are strengthened and we are empowered. We know that you're, you got the best in mind for each of us. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, we know that when Jesus came, he came as a babe wrapped in swaddling, swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. You had great plans for your son. 
We were expecting a mighty warrior king who was going to save the people. But instead, you sent us a king, a, and a, a king of kings and a prince of peace. What a blessing that was. When Jesus came and he started calling disciples, he called them one by one. And he said, come and follow me. And as they did, pretty cool things happened. He taught them about your love and about your peace. He taught them about your scriptures, about your will and about your ways. One of the great things he did, though, was he taught those disciples to pray. And so we joined in that prayer and sang, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Would you give a listen to, or a hum to another great song, 2127, Come and See, 2127. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 1, verses 19 through 22, and then 43 through 51. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well, then who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we are expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? Well, the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth? exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, now, here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me? Nathanael asked. And Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, do you believe just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You will do greater things than this. Then he said, I tell you the truth. 
you will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on, on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. The word of God for the people of God. You know, you'll see great things. Do you think they saw Jesus getting baptized? Do you think they heard about that? Remember last week, Jesus was baptized. It was a great reveal, and the heavens opened up, and a dove in bodily form descended on Jesus, and the voice of God was heard to say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Did they know the story? Were they witnesses? First of all, were they witnesses? And if not, did they hear the story? I'm thinking that was a story to be shared. I've been preaching, and I'll continue to preach, um, Jesus, the man of mystery. Today's title is, Now You See It, Now You Don't. And I have to tell you, I don't like that title. I don't. And I couldn't come up with anything better. I do need a vacation. <laughs> but if you think about, <laughs> you'll see why in a minute. You laugh now, wait till later. You'll, if you think about it, in, um, as things are, we have the benefit of 2,000 years, folks. We know the end of the story. We know lots of little pieces as they go along. But if you think about real time and how things were unfolding, and the events, and here, you know, I keep thinking John the Baptist, he's back out in the river, baptizing. And now the, now the, the re religious leaders have sent, thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Every time I think I'm done with John the Baptist, he shows up in our scriptures again. Even this week, he shows up. The religious leaders have sent more people to say, who are you? Are you the Messiah? Are you the one? And he says, no. And I'm sure he said no several times. And then he, they ask, well, are you Elijah? And again, he says, no. So the focus has been on John the Baptist for so long. Keep in mind, he's been out in that river for a long time, baptizing people, telling them to repent from their sins. And so the focus has been on John the Baptist. And they're still trying to figure out who he is even though they know that he just baptized Jesus. And the heavens opened up, the dove came down, the voice of God was heard, and they're still asking those questions. So who are you? It's almost, it felt like it was almost a magic trick, and they knew the answer. Anybody like magic tricks? Thank you. Anybody still do magic tricks? Last night I made my magic wand disappear. I could not find it. I found it this morning. <laughs> In, I, mean, I love magic tricks, not just so I know the answers, but in sixth grade, we had a, a talent show um, before we graduated, finished the year, and moved on to junior high. Anybody have that kind of an experience? Anybody? No, there we go. Thank you. I'm not alone. <laughs> I was a part of a girls' um, quartet trio. I don't know, maybe there was eight or nine of us. I don't know how many that is. But um, they were singing. They had beautiful voices. They added, decided to add choreography, and I don't hold that against them. I just cannot do that. I, I barely have. I'm able to walk with one foot in front of the other one. I have no rhythm. I will tell you that. I have absolute. So when somebody is clapping, even at a football game, I have to watch somebody else. <laughs> I have no rhythm. But so I'm not sure if the girls kicked me out or if I just said, I can't do this. But I did not sing with my friends. And I don't hold that against them. They, they did a great job. But I went home and I said, Mom, I'm off the hook. I can't do this. I'm just not going to do anything. She said, no, everybody has to do something. And I'm like, I have no talent. OK, I'm just, I was counted absent in second grade, and I was there. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. So um, my mom said, you got to do something. And I said, OK, I, I like magic tricks. I'm going to do, just do a couple of magic tricks. And she said, sure, that'd be great. I'll pray for you. So I'm thinking she knew I wasn't very good then. I'm still not very good today. But I think when I think about the scriptures, Jesus was a man of mystery. And people were trying to find those answers and the solutions. 
And I, when I hear, read about Nathaniel, he was in awe, wasn't he? It's like, you are the son of man. It's like, first of all, he says, can anything good come from Nazareth? And then all of a sudden, he changes his tune and he's in awe. Like the magic trick had just been revealed to him. Jesus is not a magic trick. Please don't get me wrong. Don't write my DS, please. He had the answer and he was in awe. Are you in awe when you see Jesus? Are you in awe when you encounter Jesus? I hope so. I hope so. I brought this morning I, my magic wand, but I brought a magic trick with me. Um, one that I don't know if you're going to be in awe about, but I found this coloring book, and I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. I, I'm going to doodle. And then I realized there's no lines. How many of you like to color within the lines? <laughs> How many of you need the lines? <laughs> How many are fine with just a blank piece of paper? Yeah, there's a few people there. Okay, so I needed lines, and I said, help. I know. Oh, I forgot the magic wand. What? <laughs> <laughs> See, I, yeah. And um, for some reason, I lost my crayons, and I couldn't find. I didn't go check for crayons. I know there's crayons here somewhere. But um, if I had crayons, I would say, whoo. And wave those crayons over the coloring book. And then I would go, watch. I know. I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The student body at Elk Run Elementary was less impressed. OK, so I have one more magic trick for you. What is the date on this quarter? Can you read the date on that quarter? 1974, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. OK, so I have with me this cute little box, clear box, red lid, no if and oh, never mind. <laughs> Look, the quarter got from my hand into the box all on its own. Oh my gosh. That's about how well it went in sixth grade, too. But I want you to know um, there is no magic about Jesus. Jesus is the real deal. And Nathaniel was in awe when he discovered that Jesus saw him under the fig tree well before Philip even found him. I want you to hear that um, Peter and Andrew were brothers from the same town. And so whether they had conversation or not, I'm not sure. We're not told. Whether they were at Jesus' baptism or not or heard about it later, we're not told. But when Jesus says, come and follow me, some of the disciples did. They dropped everything and left everything behind. They had no idea where they were going or what they were doing. That's kind of cool, kind of wild. How many of you could just say, I'll go? Most of us, when we're invited somewhere, we want to know where we're going, what we're doing, wh who's driving, what time are we going, what time are we coming back, what are we eating? But those questions weren't, we're not told any of those questions were asked. It was come and follow me. For Nathaniel, can anything good come out of it, Nazareth? And then he's in awe. Whether more happened, we're not told, but we know that his attitude changed. And he was all on board with following Jesus. I know many of you are all on board in following where we're going and we're not done. We're not, picture's still being painted. I know there's people who need help. And God is calling us to jump on board and to maybe invite more, invite more people to see what we can do together for the kingdom of God here on earth, for others that need a relationship with Jesus. I know many of you are reading um, in what was in the newsletter, I read a little bit every day of your Bible so that you can draw closer to God. I'd love to hear how that's going for you. Reading our scriptures, being in God's word is another way to, to hear from God, to speak with God and to hear from God, to be in awe of all that God is doing. Know that in, in real time, Jesus was a man of mystery. 
And the people were more than happy to say, yeah, I can go. I'm happy to join you. I see that you're, there's something special about Jesus. Whether they had all the details or not, they were willing to follow. How about you? Is there someone you need to share a story with and help them to be in awe and, and to say yes to Jesus? To explore what that relationship might look like? I hope so. Give me a call if you need help. I'd be happy to help you. For now, let us pray. Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for, for the stories that tell us how um, people were just turning up their noses. And then they, they were flipped around for whatever reason and were in awe of Jesus. Lord, I am in awe of Jesus every day. Lord, what a blessing it is that he came and he showed, the, he gathered those disciples and he showed them all about you. He revealed himself and he revealed the scriptures so that they too could understand your will and your ways. I know they had questions as they bumbled about, but in real time, for them to say yes is pretty awesome. To say yes to this man of mystery, whom they knew very little about, is truly a blessing for all of us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come now to the offering, a chance to give back to the mission and the ministry of this, your church. Of course, the offering plates can't be passed because of COVID, but there is an offering plate in the back. If you missed it on your way in, it's still sitting there on your way out. Um, if you weren't prepared with an offering today, that's okay. Um, you can always drop it off at the church, um, mail it in at 838 North 25th Street, um, Fort Dodge, Iowa, 50501. If you live locally, of course, you can drop it off Monday through Thursday morning from 9 to 12. Um, the office will, is always staffed. And the, the best way to give is through an automatic gift. It's better than this magic. <laughs> an automatic gift um, or a gift giving to the church. If you just call the church office, 515-573-3519, Kathy would be happy to help make that happen. We are blessed by each and every gift and each and every giver. Let us give thanks to God, shall we? Would you pray with me? Mighty and gracious God, we just give you thanks for this beautiful day, for all the blessings that it holds, and for all the work that you have called us to do. Lord, we are only able to do what we do because of you, because of your blessing has fallen upon so many people in this area. Lord, our church family is huge, and they have generous hearts. Lord, what a blessing they are. Lord, others need to know you and, and to be a part of that blessing as well. So, Lord, we give. We give so that others might see you as well. God, you are the source of all goodness and life. We bring our offering to you this day, knowing that all that we have comes from you. We hear your call and we answer, bringing all that we have and all that we are. We use our, your, our gifts and our talents, our bodies, for your work of peace and justice. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give a listen or a hum to another great song? Hymn number 451, Be Thou My Vision. 451. final blessing. Go into God's world, aware of God's call in your life. Follow our Lord Jesus Christ, who will lead you in paths of service and hope. Lean on the power of the Holy Spirit to give you courage and strength. May peace, joy, and love flow through you to others. In God's name, amen.
Our final song is hymn number 714, maybe? Oh, yeah, there we go, 714. I know whom I have believed. Thank you. 